Hello and welcome to this little tutorial series on Ultraschall. Today I want to show you what Ultraschall is and why it's great for podcasting. And I will also show you how you can install Ultraschall on your machine. Before we go to the installation part, which is in the second half of this video with the timestamp down in the description, I want to briefly show you why Ultraschall is such a great piece of software to record your own podcast. So Ultraschall is based on Reaper, the digital audio workstation made for music production. And Reaper has a very great audio engine built in. And what makes it even more special is that it's highly customizable. And so a couple of German developers came together to create the Ultraschall interface. Because while Reaper is great for music production, music production software is not necessarily great for podcast production. Because, for example, you don't measure your time in, in individual bars, you measure your timing in seconds and minutes and therefore it's much easier if you have the second and minute timing up here uh, for, for example in the interface and that's just one of the first <laughs> and simplest adaptation that they've done to make Ultraschall into a very great podcast recording and editing suite. So what is so great about Ultraschall? It has a lot of features. Not only does is it a fully built digital audio workstation with all of the tools that you need. Um, it also has convenience features built in, like, for example, a soundboard that you have here in the bottom right. So just with the click of a button, you can load up any MP3 and then hit play, and you can have your own jingles, intro music, uh, and whatever else you have play in your digital workstation. And that is then immediately recorded at high quality, and you can do also all kinds of other fancy things like ducking or fading out. So it has a fully fledged soundboard built in. You don't need any third party software for that. You also can very easily do remote recordings with people who are not with you in the same room. It has the support for Studio Link, which is another German development, um, a piece of software where you can very easily get um, a number of people together and record together with very low latency and high quality with also added local recording. So you don't need to fiddle with Skype or Zoom or any of the other tools and then try to get the audio from Zoom and then have a separate audio file and then splice it all together in your editing process. No, you immediately have it all synced up in your editing software and you're good to go. You also have very rich support for metadata, both while recording and then when you're done recording and in the edit. You can set edit marks, for example, and you can even customize these edit marks during the recording. So you realize somebody's coughing, somebody's um, said a, a bad word, somebody had to start over again. You simply add an edit mark and then in the editing process, you go back in there and edit that. You can also add chapter marks during the recording and during the editing. And with that, you can create chapters for your podcast that then can be used in podcast uh, players for quick skipping through your episode or going back to a topic that people want to listen to again. And this doesn't require any additional third-party software. You can simply do that straight up in Ultraschall. And this and other features make this such a streamlined experience that from the recording of your podcast to the edit to publishing it really takes no time at all. You can be very, very quick with your edits and also you can do more complicated edits. This is like a, a little bit of a bigger project that I've done where I splice together not only my own, own recording, but also sound bites from other people that I've spoken to, intro music and, and stuff like that. And this was done very, very easily and quickly in Ultraschall with full control over levels, over placement, over timing, um, something that's really more challenging to do in other pieces of software. And also all of this done is non-destructively. So I never changed the original recording, unlike for example, uh, software like Audacity, where whatever you do is baked into the file that you're working with. Uh, all of the things I'm doing here can be very easily undone. You never lose your original recording. You always have the original audio files untouched, but with all of your edits on top in the software. So whatever you do, if you do solo podcasts, if you just talk with one person, if you talk with five people, if you talk with people remotely, if you talk with people on site, uh, no matter what your podcast is like, you will very easily be able to edit this in Ultraschall. And that's why I'm such a big fan of this software. I want to 
make it more available to more people. And that's why I'm starting this little um, set of tutorials. So now we're going to show you how to actually install Ultraschall. So let's download and install actually Ultraschall 5 for Reaper. And to do that, we are going to ultraschall.fm. The link will be also in the description. And we're just going to simply follow the on-screen instructions that we have on the web browser. I still want to run this through with you because there's a couple of things that you really have to pay attention to. So we're opening the website, ultraschall.fm, and we're simply hitting the download button. Um, here we come to the installation instructions and you see there's a couple of steps that you have to do and you have to do them in order exactly as they are described by the word. And unfortunately for your English speaking um, viewers, by the word is in German here. That's why I'm here to show you and you can follow along with this version. I want to also stress here that with future versions, the process might change. So if you see any other version numbering here, if it's not Ultraschall 5, if it's 5.1 or 6 or whatever in the future, be aware that the process might have changed because it did change in the past and it might change again in the future. They're trying to streamline it every single time they update it. So it's less hassle every time you, you install a new version. So let's simply start. We want to pick the right version here from this list for our software. You can do it for Windows or for Mac OS. And it is important that you download Reaper, which is the base digital audio workstation, DAW, that we are going to use here. And that you download the exact version that is descripted, described here. Um, you don't want to go to the official Reaper website and uh, download their latest version. You don't want to update Reaper through the Reaper ins uh, update instructions once you have downloaded it because the uh, Ultraschall only works with this specific version. Uh, no other version will work. If you use a different version, you might run into problems and then you have to restart the installation and exactly do this here. And I'm saying that because this is honestly the most common mistake. When people try the software, they simply download the newest Reaper version and then they run into problems. I already downloaded my version for Catalina Big Sur. Unfortunately, I'm not yet on Apple Silicon, but maybe you are. So just make sure that you pick the right version. So I'm going to open the software, simply agree to the terms and services. And then it is as simple as always, you simply pull your app file into your applications folder. Now I waited too long. Um, pull it in there. And when it's done, we're simply going to go to our applications folder, finding um, the, the, the app and then starting it for the first time and allowing everything. That's why we have to do this now, letting it initialize for a second. And when we're done, we're going to immediately close it again. And here, this is very important. It will ask us to download a new version. We're not going to do that. And we're not going to check for new versions. And I know this is counterintuitive. Let me just close the preference window here. Um, I know this is counterintuitive but it is very important to make the whole software work. When you don't have a license key yet, you always have to wait for this little dialog box here to be done. You're just going to click still evaluating. Reaper is a very cheap DAW. I think it's around $69 or something like that. Um, and I could only recommend to buy it simply, but if you want to test this out, you can simply use the full functionality without paying for it. And also if you are really pressed for money, you never ever have to pay for it. It simply uh, will ask you to wait five seconds every time you start the app, and then you can use the full app with n without any limitations. So we're going to close this because we're far from done. Uh, we're going to close our windows and continue. This step is done. Um, I already downloaded the Ultraschall file. Um, it is also a DMG file. And when we start, it looks like this. And we're simply going to run the installer. And we have to agree this is not from a trusted source. So we have to go to our security setting. And we're going to open anyway. 
and we're going to click on open. Now with all of the security out of the way, we can actually run the installer, agree to the license agreement and hit simply hit install. Don't change anything for the installation path and also don't use the local uh, or the, the portable installation of Reaper, which is possible because then it will get more complicated to install this. Keep everything at its default place. And now we're done. I'm going to keep this for the moment. And now we have the installer um, that ran through. And now we can start Reaper again. And as you can see, we now have a new splash screen. This is uh, the Ultraschall splash screen. I know this already, that's why I'm not wanting to see this again in the future. But here it tells you a couple of the features, um, why it's cool to use that. And there's also a quick tutorial that you can uh, that you can click on and uh, see how everything works. But this is what my videos are for. We're going to evaluate still. And now you might, if you compare this to what it looked like before, we now have the new Ultraschall um, uh, surface. And with that, we are pretty much done. There is a way we can check if everything worked. Um, if we get any error messages, we want to make sure that the, we installed the right version for Reaper. Sometimes it is necessary to restart the Mac um, and then do the installation again. Uh, and if you are, have any other problems, then you can uninstall the whole software with the uninstall command that you find in the DMG. and also the remove legacy audio devices command and then just repeat all of the steps that we've done so far. And that's it. That should be it. That should work as long as you stick to the right Reaper version and follow the ins installation instructions exactly in that order, you will be good to go. And if you enjoy using Ultraschall, there is a way to say thank you. There is a button here and the link that goes to a thank you page. And here you find all of the different people contributing to the Ultraschall project. And they all have different ways of saying thank you to them. And as this is a volunteer run project, it's always nice if you like the software that you maybe check out this page and say thank you. Something that is sort of a little cosmetic special thing is if you want to change the um, the logo of the Reaper app to Ultraschall to have it a little bit more consistent. You can um, do that here uh, and you simply follow these instructions here. You go to you go to your applications, you find the Reaper um, app. You're going to rename this, for example, into Ultraschall. Um, yeah, maybe we close first the app and then we're going to go into the information file. We're going to go to this linked logo file, copy image, and then here on the small one, we're going to press Control V. And you see, we now change the icon. You can actually do this for all kinds of apps, but um, you might not be aware of it. And now we have Ultraschall. You see, I already have from my other account um, the version installed. That's why I have two versions here, um, but that's it. And now you can simply open Ultraschall. And, and now you have the Ultraschall environment. Uh, one thing that I want to show you at this point during the setup process is what happens if you, uh, how to select your audio device. So you're going to go into the Reaper preferences under audio and device. You can select the audio device. And here I'm going to select my audio device that I'm using right now and clicking OK. And um, sometimes this sound check button here might come up and ask you if your audio device has local monitoring. Here it already knows it because it sort of has it stored in a database. But if you have an uh, audio device that's not in a database, it will ask you if you have direct monitoring. And then depending on whether or not you can hear yourself through the device um, talking, you can select direct monitoring on or off. 
And that's it. Now you're ready to go. Now you can record your very first episode and uh, I show you how to do that in the next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.